Oh, champions for health. We are here today with Ricardo de Paulus from the wonderful country of Italy. And Ricardo has been so kind to, to give us some time today because we all know that Italy is dealing with the coronavirus um, in a real um, big way right now. There's a lot going on there now with it. And uh, of course, we here in America are facing possibly the same thing in the coming weeks. So I thought it would be a good idea to talk to somebody who's already been experiencing what we may be experiencing ourselves soon. So thank God Ricardo was willing to give us some time. But before we get into the whole coronavirus situation, Ricardo, I would love it if you wouldn't mind telling us some about yourself and what you you do in your in your career now. Well, thank you, James, for calling me on. Uh, I'm a yoga teacher, um, but previously I have been working as an IT uh, engineer for a big corporation, big American corporation, um, as a pre-sale also and as a consultant. So after eight years working for this big IT firm, I changed my life and I moved to Australia where I did a course as a massage therapist in Sydney, and then I moved to Byron Bay to do the teacher training. And uh, so now my job, my mission is to uh, teach yoga. So, and I really love it. Uh, that's uh, something that's important for me, and I love it. Well, that's that's great. And that's I think, a nutshell. <laughs> and I think you also have some training in the field of mindfulness. Is is that not correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I got then when I came back, when I moved back to Italy, I got um, a master's degree uh, in mindfulness and neuroscience at La Sapienza University. And then I did a course in NLP um, and also uh, coaching courses. So I never stop. I always like uh, studying and be updated. Um, so to me, mindfulness is a way to be, um, I also integrate the mindfulness, uh, aspects into the classes of yoga. So it's something you can bring in your daily life. It's not only on the mat, but also you want to use them as a tool to be more present and aware uh, of what's happening around you and observe what's happening in your, in yourself. So feeling the emotions, the sensations, and also try to act instead of react. That's uh, really something special now because we are in a situation, as you said, in Italy, um, where everything is changed and so suddenly, and uh, the daily life is totally different. Uh, something is very weird because just three weeks ago, two weeks ago, you wouldn't expect something like that. It was like a, a deep uh, transformation change and uh, we weren't ready and uh, prepared to face that. So I really hope that you can really um, have the chance now, the time to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I well, hope that's... so. Yeah, we, we didn't expect it. And it was something at the beginning in China. And then when I heard the first time it was happening in the north of Italy, and then in the following days, you can feel fear and anxiety rise, rising up day after day. And then what I've seen now, not only in the United States, but also the other countries, is that they think maybe, oh, this is because it's in Italy, they're not well organized. You know, I understand that point of view, but trust me, you know, the health system is quite efficient here. And uh, it's something tremendous. If you're not ready, you know, you need to be ready to overcome uh, this pandemic. Yeah. So, um, and I wanted to get into that a little bit with you. Thank you for that. Um, can you maybe you can talk to our viewers a little bit about your your day to day challenges, what you're dealing with, what yes, people well, what people like you are dealing with and how this has affected you personally? Yes. Um, well, we are in quarantine, so. Most of the day you have to stay at home. You can only go out to get your food and uh, or maybe for specific needs. For example, if you need to go to the doctor, first of all, you have to call them. But if you, there is an emergency, you can uh, go out. Uh, otherwise, we have to stay at home. Uh, 
Um, at the beginning, they were trying to be more, you know, a little bit more quiet, you know, without forcing too much. But it didn't work because people they don't want to stay at home. I understand that me neither. But the point is that we need to be responsible because if we stay at home, then we can preserve other people's life. So this is a huge responsibility. And uh, if you understand this point, then we can save a lot of people, friends and members of the family and and whatever, you know, very old people also. Well, we have seen also that, you know, people will say, yes, it's just a matter of, you know, very old people. But it's not true because many of um, even young people are in ventilators, so they need to be, to be in the hospital for two or three weeks. But it's not something very easy to manage if suddenly thousands of people need to stay in the hospital. That's why we had this huge outbreak here and with a lot of difficulties. So you need to be prepared. So buy a lot of food, uh, alcohol to clean the surface, and clean your hands with gel, alcohol gel, soap, and whatever, you know, you know better than me, how to be prepared for an event like this, probably, no? It's something you can see in the movies. You know, there are many movies about that, catastrophic movies, but it's the same. You know, you need to get ready to have plenty of food at home. And uh, so you can really limit the time outside, limit the contact. So even though it's very hard, and don't wait for the last minute where you will have a lot of uh, cases around you but try to do it right now. Even though you, you don't have any people around who are sick, do it now because eventually there will be, and there will be a little bit late because it is transmittable even without no symptoms. Mm -hmm. So it's good mm -hmm. to understand that even you are close to someone who doesn't have any symptoms, but he could be infected, it, it can infect you. So it's important mm -hmm. to put some distance. Use masks if you, if you can, or just avoid people. It's hard to say because as Italian, we are struggling. We are really suffering from that. You know us, you know, we love hugging and touching people and kisses. It's terrible, but I think it's important. And another good point, I can see that, yes, you are forced to stay at home, but you can bring value to this time. So you can have the time to explore yourself, to be more in contact with your parents, with your friends, even though we are far, but we can talk to each other by iPhone, phones, and so IT are very important now. They connected us. Mm -hmm. We can work uh, by home with uh, streaming, you know, and doing classes online of yoga. So, and even though there's no the touch, the adjustments that can do it, but there is still this connection, and people are following me and are grateful because it's a a part during the day where they can really focus on something different than numbers and catastrophic numbers. That's yes. very important, you know? I, I so, think, uh, Ricardo, I think that's really great advice. I actually was talking to a friend yesterday and, you know, if you listen to the news all day long, you can get very depressed. Absolutely. So I think doing things like, you know, maybe some yoga at home or some mindfulness exercises, yeah. um, is, is a great idea. That's really a, a good suggestion. And um, I was wondering if you had any like quick little recommendations you could give us right now. I want to say to our viewers that um, hopefully not too far in the distant future, we may have some more blogs from you with, with yeah. more, you know, yoga instructions and mindfulness, which we look forward to that, Ricardo. But for, for right now, um, you know, it's, it's not legally required in America that you have to be at home. However, it is strongly encouraged. So most people now are at home and they're not really going out a lot. So I think people are getting a little bit of, I don't know if you've heard the term cabin fever, but yeah. it's when people stay inside and then they get kind of anxious. So maybe you could give us some quick tips or ideas or techniques to help out with that. Well, sure. The first one we can use is a breath awareness uh technique, I would call it technique, uh, it comes from, um, you know, traditions. Um, but the idea is to find a comfortable seat, that could mm -hmm. be chair or 
couch is fine or on a cushion and try to keep the spine erected and chin slightly to the chest, relax your hands, maybe close the eyes or maybe keep them gentle open towards the floor. Try to create a connection with the breath. So as you inhale and as you exhale deeply, try to feel this gentle movement of the air in and out. And focus on the parts of the body touch with the floor. So maybe there can be your feet if you are on a chair or your knees or glutes if you are sitting on a cushion or onto your knees, depending on the posture. Uh, as you inhale, as you exhale, try to be open, listen to the body. So focus in the first time to what the body is telling you now. And if we recognize some kind of anxiety, try to stay there, acknowledge it, that there is anxiety, and keep breathing gently. There is nothing wrong with that. It's okay. Try to focus the attention to this rhythm of the breath. So, for example, you can start to count from 1 to 10 at each inhalation and exhalation. There will be, for example, inhale, exhale 1, inhale, exhale 2, with your own pace. Maybe till 10 for the first time. And try to observe this gentle rhythm. If the mind starts to wandering, it's okay. It's totally fine. Try to move your attention back to the rhythm of the breath. Explore the quality of the air as you inhale and as you exhale. And maybe you can notice a different temperature, a different fragrance as you inhale and as you exhale. Maybe you can notice a different frequency, a different rhythm after a while. It's okay. And then come back to this idea of yourself touching the earth with all the spine erected. And gently open your eyes. It starts to move left and right, relaxing your arms and hands. So this is a very short technique of breath awareness meditation. You can do five minutes at the start as a beginning um, and then we can extend the time the first thing is that after a few minutes the mind starts to wandering because you want to move and it's totally fine it's always like that so try to bring your attention back to an object in this case we have the breath as an object now sometimes you can have a mantra or a visualization but this practice just focusing the breath and the reason why is that we breathe in and out every time. So we can use it any time. At the beginning, when you are at home now, we need to stay at home. Okay, we just sit. When you feel that mind is spinning around, you just sit and come back to this present moment, focusing your breath on the rhythm of the breath. We can extend the time. So the next time we can do it a little bit longer. And the, fir the first time it's good to practice five minutes and unless you don't have any previous trauma, you can do it easily at home, of course. What, mm -hmm. what seems, you know, if you have something, you know, a big issue, then you need someone close to you and a personal, you know, path to do it. But unless there's nothing specific, you can do it at your home. It's totally fine and secure. Absolutely. Okay, this is the, 
this is a, a little little practice of uh, breath awareness and um, and you can see the results in terms of results if you want them I understand that after a while it's okay so it's really important and the next step is to quit the idea of having results but that's another story so just focusing now as a rescue remedy focusing your attention on your body first grounding effect on the body and then on your breath in and out it's a good practice i guess i, I tell you I, I was also i think it's wonderful I, I was trying to do a little bit when you were you were showing it and i already feel calmer to be honest with you oh that's, yes thank you it's good it no, thank good. you too because it was about you not me <laughs> yeah well great well that's good fantastic <laughs> and I, I almost think i need to do it when i get up in the morning and maybe even first thing in the afternoon to kind of I feel like it kind of resets me. Do you know what I mean? Re yes. It, it gets me back into a, a, a better place. Exactly. So a it's, better place. It's, it's a good point because what we are doing is uh, create a space between each thought. So you can really have the time after some practice to observe what's happening from another point of view. That's not doesn't mean that you're not involved, that you don't... Yeah. You don't feel them, but you don't try to follow them. So you're not attached to them. Okay, that's the main idea of yes. watching the reality without overreacting, without being overwhelmed by what's happening. It's very hard in this time with this practice, yes. of course. Yes. But we can do it for five minutes, just five minutes. And then we can start to do it the day after maybe seven, then 10. That way we find another limit, not a border. I understand that. It's fine. Just stay there as long as you can. And it's a good way because if you build up the practice and the habit, then it starts to be your safe zone. Yes. So this yes. Is the idea of yes, I like that. I like the safe zone concept. That's yes. very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, um, I think that uh, we probably need to unfortunately wrap this up, but it has been so helpful and i again i cannot thank you enough you know how much americans love italians we love you guys it's the same for us we love americans you know well yes there's there's a there's been a long i think a, a long love story between the two countries and um we uh we only wish you the best we're so we of course are our our hearts are heavy because you're having to go through this yeah but but we uh wish you a quick recovery the country and we hope yeah. that you will stay safe and your family um, I understand you. your brother. I understand your brother was in the hospital recently. I hope he's doing okay. Yes, um, yes, it was an appendix, so it was okay. It was fine. Good surgery, but it was everything was fine. And of course, it was very, you know, there was a lot of anxiety because you need to go out with the mask and gloves. Oh, uh, so it wasn't easy to observe these things because when you have an, an emergency, you need to be ready and prepared. Yes, but. Um, Luckily, us, it was okay. So he's fine at home now, and it was good. So good. Well, that's good. that's very good news. That's very good news. And uh, hopefully, we will be talking to you again uh, in the not too distant future. Yes. And whenever you um, want, it's a pleasure. It's a yes. pleasure. We can we can organize whenever you want to. Then following days, just let me know, and we can do more practices and and updates, of course, and practices of mindfulness and yoga. I would. I think my, I know I would love that. And I think my viewers would love that. So, so yes. thank, thank you so much again and stay safe. Thank Absolutely. you. And uh, let me know when you put it online so I can reblog on Facebook, Instagram, and my web pages. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. All right. Okay. All right. Ciao. Okay. Ciao, Ricardo. You ciao. stay safe. Okay. Thank you. Ciao. You too. Ciao, James. Grazie. Ciao, Grazie. ciao. See <laughs>